Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to another episode on the Hermit's Craft server. It's episode 64, one full stack of Hermit Craft Season 5 episodes. And this one is a little bit special because I'm recording it on the day that it's going to release. It's one of those episodes once again, which means that we've got 8 hours to actually do all of the recording. And that gives me just enough time to edit it all and then get it up on YouTube. Hopefully, fingers crossed, if nothing goes wrong. The reason for me being so behind is actually not because of my poor timing. Well, it's kind of because of my poor timing. But it's more because I spent all of yesterday working on some redstone contraptions that never ended up working. And I also had a failed filming trip the day before, which... I might potentially talk about later on in the video because it really is quite funny. But anyway, as far as plans are concerned, we have something pretty special going on in this area if we have enough room. Who can guess who designed this melon and pumpkin farm? I'll give you one guess and I'm about 90% certain that about 90% of you will actually get it correct because of course this thing was designed by El Mango. Now if you're wondering why we use El Mango's farm so often on the Hermitcraft server, it's simply because he knows what he's talking about, okay? He's not like me. He's not like me who just kind of splashes about redstone and builds things willy-nilly. He actually does research and he knows what he's doing. And there are many, many reasons why this is one of the most efficient melon and pumpkin farms that you can possibly build in Minecraft. Now, I'll put a link to his video down in the description if you want to know all of these reasons and if you want to build it for yourselves. But this is the design that we're going to be using. It should be pretty simple. And just as a bit of a side note, uh, this farm over here is actually my design. I made it when Slime Blocks first released, and when Il Mango did his video on this melon pumpkin farm, he listed all the reasons why that farm over there is considerably better than this one that I made. <laughs> oh. So this is the 18 by 18 area that the melon and pumpkin farm is going to be occupying. So this is it. It fits in pretty much perfectly within this space, giving us also a little bit of area over here to build other types of farms. I have no clue what those are going to be just yet. But then underneath this thing, we are going to have a full zone for all of the minecart rails. So minecart rails are going to be running underneath this thing and they're going to be picking up all of the drops. I don't fully understand why my storage system keeps locking up, especially on sponges. I don't want to lose sponges. That would be really bad news. We must just be logging out at the wrong time because this is... I mean, look, this one's locked up as well. There is a chance that it's got kind of overclogged with items, as in it locked up once and then clogged itself up with items that have kind of backed up through the system. I don't really know, but there does seem to be a lot of them. Part one of the building process has now been completed. All of the minecart rails are now in place. We have the little dips in these areas where the water is going to be going in this dirt zone that's going to be keeping all of the dirt and soil hydrated for our melon and pumpkin farm. And this is what is going to be picking up all of the items from on top of the dirt. Now, I am interested to see what this thing actually looks like from up above in terms of scale. Pretty good. I mean, it looks okay. It definitely looks like we need some bits and pieces going on on either side of it. But once we get both of these in place, it's going to look like a fairly monstrous setup. Next up, we've got to power all of the minecart rails then actually get our dirt platform in place. Lots of levers and of course lots of dirt. Which apparently I am running low on. Episode 64 and I've only got 62 pieces of dirt. I'm doing something horribly wrong. Things are going pretty well on the progress front. So we have got all of the dirt in place now and all of the water on top of the trap doors that we have right here. So I guess next up we should probably till all of the soil and then I need to look up how I actually have to place in the melons and the pumpkins because they're in a very specific order that actually makes the farm more efficient. I think it's if you have, I mean, don't hold me to this, but I think it's if you have melon, pumpkin, melon, <laughs> I don't know. Watch your mango's video. <laughs> now, hopefully, there is some form of melon and pumpkin farm in this area over here. I only need a handful. I just need enough to actually kickstart my own farm so that I can actually plant them in. Yes! Okay, there it is. I mean, we probably are going to need more than that, though. And most of it seems to have been destroyed by a creeper. I'm such an idiot. I already have a pumpkin farm. Is it a melon and a pumpkin farm? It's just a pumpkin farm. That's kind of frustrating, but also kind of brilliant. And this thing's just been champing on for like the past four months. So this line right here is pumpkins. This line right here is melons. Pumpkins, melons, pumpkins, melons, pumpkins, 
melons, pumpkins, melons. Now, the reason I'm saying that to myself, and I'm trying to hardwire that into my brain, is because, as you can see right now, it is impossible to differentiate between the pumpkins and the melons. So remember that. Melons, these ones. Pumpkins, second row. Then melons, then pumpkins. Okay. We need more melon seeds. Whoa! <laughs> I've just popped over to Exuma's base because I thought he had a melon and pumpkin farm. I'm still not 100% certain, but this is... mad! This is seriously awesome! Seriously cool! But I can't see any melon and pumpkin farm, that, that's for sure. <laughs> In the next season of Hermitcraft, I would like to do builds like this. I think I'm finally, I'm finally going to take on an organic shape for Hermitcraft Season 6. I have no clue when that's going to be though, so you could be waiting a while. There must be someone on the server who has melons that I can steal. I mean seriously, this is just inconsiderate. Now that we have all of the melons and pumpkins planted, it is time to actually place in all of the pistons and start work on all of the redstone. So I have gathered up a whole bunch of resources, we're going to need to turn those into wood. That's good. We're then going to need to pick up some iron, which once again, this thing has been an absolute beast over the past couple days. And there is one stack. Now we're going to need plenty more than that. I swear I'm running out of everything in today's Hermitcraft episode. I need loads of stone to do all the stone slabs. And there is absolutely nothing to be seen. I can't even remember where I put my stone slab. Where are my stone slabs? <laughs> I swear they're around here somewhere. Well, I found them and there's barely any in there. What an absolute waste of time. Okay, I need to find my silk touch pickaxe and do like a mini mining session here. And as per usual, stone mining sessions pay off. 11 diamonds. Not quite as good as the 52 we got last time, but it's a good start. Now that we finally have all of the resources ready to build this thing, the next thing on the to-do list is to place in the redstone line. So these things right here, this big waffle that I'm creating, is going to be the redstone circuit, which is going to be powering all of our sticky pistons. Now the sticky pistons will go on the underside of these slabs, just like this. Then they'll have slabs on top of them. And those slabs will extend downwards into the melon and pumpkins, causing them to explode. And then the minecarts underneath will pick up all of the drops. I'm sure all of this makes sense to a lot of you. I'm just trying my best to explain every piece of the process so you actually know what I'm doing in the video. Because otherwise, <laughs> otherwise it's all very confusing. Oh man, this thing's kicking into action already. We're getting melons, pumpkins, and everything like that all popping up. This thing's gonna be so fast, and when we have both of them, it's just gonna be ridiculous. Things are going pretty well. Pistons are now going in. It's getting quite difficult to move through the farm with the levels of melon and pumpkins that keep popping up in the area. You can see they're growing as we speak, which is good to see. And now we have to place in slabs. Yes, slabs across the bottom, all the way across, and then we're pretty much done as far as the body of the farm is concerned, apart from all the glass that needs to go around the outside. The slabs are on all of the pistons, everything has now been fully lit up, so now it is time to actually start placing in the redstone lines up on the top. Now we still have a decent amount of time left for this episode, so I'm pretty happy with how much progress we've made, and I hope we should be able to build the second one as well. After running out of resources once again, we are all done with the redstone setup. So that is that. All of these pistons can now be powered with this redstone. In fact, you know what? I'm going to try it out. We're going to see if this thing fully functions. Now, I think I'm probably going to have to turn on this one. And also another one over here. But as far as I can see... We have got full coverage. And it has wiped out all of the melons and pumpkins that we had in that area. Nicely done! Nicely done! Okay, what comes next? I can't even think what comes next. I'm almost tempted, in fact it's all of the timing circuits, I'm almost tempted to start work on the next module before we do all of the timing circuits and actually finish this thing up. Yeah, I think that's going to be the plan. So I'm going to start work on the other melon and pumpkin farm that we're going to have on this side of the village of Breeder. And you know what? We've been doing a heck of a lot of progress updates here. We've been doing, well, it's basically been 100% progress updates. Just me saying, hey, I placed in the slaps. Hey, I placed in the pistons. Hey, I placed in the redstone. Maybe it's about time that we did some form of time lapse.
But before I do any form of third person time lapse, I think I should probably gather some of the resources for it because otherwise, well, it's not going to be a very interesting third person time lapse. I'm going to place a few blocks, then run off for 10 minutes, and then come back and play some more. Yeah, let's, let's get ourselves set up. And as if I wasn't under enough time pressure, my internet has now gone out. I did see some guys in British Telecom, which is BT, our internet service provider, like the people that do all of the infrastructure for the internet, poking around in the internet box, kind of nearish my house. Either they've made a horrendous mistake, or they're doing maintenance. But... We seem to be back online. We've we've all of a sudden just come back online. <laughs> yes! <laughs> what a win! Somebody somewhere out there rebooted the internet. This is fantastic news for today's Hermitcraft episode. So now that we can actually play on the Hermitcraft server, the next thing that I'm going to need is huge amounts of gold so that we can make all of the powered rails. And I thought this was a good opportunity to actually replace the snow that I stole from the gold farm last time I used it. I'm, I'm very sorry, Escal. And three, two, one. This thing will never get boring to use. <laughs> it's just the best thing ever. You know what, I thought while I was here, considering these guys are absolutely pouring in still, it'd probably be a good idea to actually fully repair all of my equipment. My shovel is almost done. There we go, and this guy. Sweet. And this should just about do us for the resource gathering. I think all we need is 36 extra pistons to add to our mix-up, and then we should have all of the resources required to at least do the first part of this project. Oh, apart from the prismarine. I've forgotten the prismarine and all the dirt. I'm such a moron. And now we really are ready to go. Everything's gathered. Let's do this. So in today's time-lapse chat, I want to talk to you about two different things. Number one is about the posters and the bundle and everything like that. Uh, as you know, this project, this merchandising special edition type thing where we had the bundle of the, the little figurine, the posters, and also the t-shirt has been, it's, it's been brilliant. Like, it's been a massive success, but it's also had a lot of delays in it. So we had delays in the postage of the posters, and then eventually the posters have arrived, and then over the past couple of weeks I've been signing them. But finally, I can confirm that they are going to be arriving at the merchandiser by tomorrow, so Saturday, which means they should be sent out next week. So for those of you who ordered the bundles, they will be coming very soon. I've been seeing your emails, I've been seeing your tweets, I've been trying to respond to everyone, uh, and I know that Zavi and Cap and Cook, the people that are dealing with these orders, have had a bit of a storm of emails as well. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, it's just all sorts of delays in all sorts of areas. It was a bit of an ambitious project, and it involved a lot of different factors that all had to come together correctly. And as per usual, when you do that sort of thing, one thing fails and it delays the entire project. But as I say, they will be coming out soon, so I apologize for all of the delays, but hopefully they will be in your hands within the next 14 days. I don't really know, but that's that's what we're kind of aiming for here. So there we go. Uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is a filming channel project that totally failed. It's <laughs> well, I don't know if it totally failed. I'm still kind of humming and hiring about doing a video on it, just because I think it would be a fun video to do. Um, but essentially, me and Vicky, we were going to do a video on the camper van. So I wanted to actually take the camper van out and camp in it. That was kind of the plan. And it went semi-successfully in the start. So we, we set off a little bit late. Uh, we filmed a lot of the footage of the camper van. It was all looking really, really good. We got to a certain location that I wanted to shoot at, at Golden Hour. And I was kind of shooting some footage there. And then just as Golden Hour was starting, which is when the sun is at its lowest point in the sky. And it's casting really nice long shadows. And all of the light looks really nice and golden. Just as that started to happen, just one cloud moved across the sky and covered the sun for the entirety of the hour. <laughs> it was just there the whole time, which meant that we completely ran out of light and it was just dark, which doesn't look so good on film. So we kind of failed there, and then we were going to camp out the night, and long story short, there was one other car in the place that we stayed at. They kind of turned up, stayed there for like 10 minutes, and then as they were leaving, they stopped at the exit and turned off their lights, like, they turned off their car, covering the whole exit. Like, they parked across the exit. And as the only car in the car park, the only other car in the car park, which was us, and we were camping in it, we kind of got a little bit freaked out, because this was like a, this was like quite a, a secluded area, 
We got a little bit freaked out, I'm gonna be honest with you. Eventually the people turned on their car and left, and we thought, you know what? <laughs> that was scary, we're going home. So we drove home really late at night and we totally failed at our camping mission. Which means that, <laughs> all in all, it wasn't massively successful, but it was quite funny. And I am kind of tempted to upload the footage that we did get and tell the story over on the filming channel. So let me know if you do want to see that. But anyway, let's pop back on the Hermitcraft server. So that is all of the structure done. We're now in the process of placing in all of the lighting and doing all of the redstone for it. And then we can do both timing circuits for both sets of farms. Now, as far as time is concerned, when we first started this episode, I think we had, I can't remember how much time we actually had for this, but I've only got about an hour and 45 minutes before I actually have to start editing this thing. So we are, <laughs> we're cutting it a little bit fine, but hopefully we should be able to pull off a decent amount in that allotted time period. Let's see how this thing looks from above. Pretty good! We are doing fairly well in that department. It doesn't look quite as dramatic as this one. This is a very dramatic module, but this is cool. I think once we get all of the farms in these gaps right here, then things will start to improve a little bit. But as you can see, yeah, we've got all of the redstone in place. In fact, we've done pretty much everything for that one. Both of these are now completely equal in terms of what they have going on. So I guess now, hopper timers. That's literally it. And then these things will be up and running. And that, my friends, is that. We now have ourselves a hopper timer. It is activating the system every now and again. Things are being harvested and everything is looking pretty good. The only thing is, as you just saw there, the minecart does not go over into that section. So I'm hoping, with my fingers crossed, that this will work as I intended. Now, it is a little bit difficult, as I seem to have a lot of stuff in my inventory, but if we just chuck out maybe some dirt and try our best to pick up that rail. Yes, that's good. That's what we want it to do. So now when the minecart comes round, it will activate the detector rail, which will send it across onto that one. It will then offload all of its items, which is good. And then eventually this thing will activate. Wow, we have filled up that hopper mine car instantly. <laughs> I mean, this has been running for what? About two, maybe a minute, two minutes? Oh my word, that is bonkers. That system did break, however. So I've swapped it out for this thing, which means that now the minecart heads off in the opposite direction, wraps around like that, and then eventually makes its way back onto the powered rail by going across like this. Seemed to work better because occasionally it would hit the detector rail, flip the minecart track around, and then go off in that direction, which isn't particularly good. Whereas now, it does that. That makes sense. And for the second time, this one should now be done as well. We just need to make sure that all of this is completely spawn proof. We don't want any zombies coming up in here and then destroying all of our villagers. And then we need to make sure that this is a minecart hopper. That's that done, okay. Minecart there, and then flick it on. That was a very big harvest, but look how fast these things grow back. It doesn't look real. It actually doesn't look real. <laughs> I mean, that's already... I can't count. I actually can't count how fast they're popping up. It's like whack-a-mole. Now, I'm interested to see what happens with this minecart. Okay, that goes in the correct direction, so we don't need to do any corrections there. This thing is working, and holy mackerel. <laughs> One harvest. Nice. Okay, so that is it. Both these farms are now completed. And I am absolutely chuffed to bits that we've managed to pull that off in one episode. So I think to round things up today, I'm going to take a break from the redstone and everything like that. And do a little bit of villager gathering. Because we are trying our best to populate this area. And it's not going so well so far. That guy was like a white coat. I don't really like those too much. That's another white coat, so not particularly brilliant. This guy is... I think he's got... I think he's a blacksmith. Yep, he's a blacksmith, so once again, not too fussed by those for the time being. Finally! One that we can actually put in the system. I really like this system, by the way. This thing's, this thing's pretty smart. I don't seem to be having the best of luck at this point in time. So that guy was a butcher. No, that's terrible. That's a cleric. I mean, are you serious? 
Finally, once again, I keep getting streaks of terrible villagers and then the occasional white coat or brown coat. I have no clue if they're good or not. I just know that those ones are the kind of the ones that I generally want. Rubbish again, though. Oops, seems like we've actually backed up the system again. I don't know how I didn't notice this happening, but that is what I like to see. I'm refusing to check them out until I finish going through all of them. I still think we've got a few left, so I'm going to pick those ones up, and then we'll actually take a look at what sort of trades we've got. And that's that. So all of the villagers are now gone, and all of the villagers that we have should have been in the system. But this guy right here, once again, is being reluctant to move. Hang on. So, let's take a look at our new selection. I think this guy, that's terrible. Absolutely awful. He's a cartographer. Luck of the C3 for 23 emeralds. That's another cartographer. That's another cartographer. Punch 2 for 31 emeralds. That's pretty bad. <laughs> We've had him for a while, I think. I think he's one of the old school ones. That's awful. And that's terrible. Good! Another successful villager achievement session. <laughs> One of these days, this thing is actually going to start producing decent villagers. I have about 20 minutes until our deadline, which means that I can spend a little bit more time on the editing, and I don't have to rush it so much, which means there's less chance of me making a mistake, which is always a positive thing. But anyway, if you did enjoy, please be sure to hit that like button, and if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later. And as per usual, check out the latest film on the Filming Channel. There's going to be more stuff coming out on there over the next couple of weeks.